It's the middle of the wet season in Namibia. The last few days have seen violent storms moving in swiftly and suddenly. But what I didn't count on is being here during the wettest year in a century. It's impossible to work in this, but it's brilliant for wildlife. However, Despite the torrential rain, the temperature remains extremely hot. Then, a break in the bad weather gives me the chance to head out with guide Ulrich Opperman to check on two vulnerable spotted hyenas. The rain has made a massive difference to the greenery, hasn't it? Yeah, it's never rained this much. It's crazy that you haven't been able to drive in here for at least, was it two weeks now? Yeah. Two weeks, yeah. So all of the animals in here, you've not seen for two weeks, you've no idea what's happened. Yeah. Spotty, a hyena and her cub, live in a burrow just a kilometre from park headquarters. And because the rest of her clan have been killed by lions, they live alone. Hyena get really bad press. They're often portrayed as something sinister or a villain. But actually, they're a top predator. They're really interesting. And they're vulnerable, too, to attack from lions. <laughs> Hyenas are largely nocturnal. They're renowned as scavengers picking up leftovers from other predators' kills. They're so well adapted to this role, they can eat and digest virtually every part of an animal, including its bones. But they're also top predators, and that brings them into direct competition with the big cats, especially lions. As a result, they often fall victim to them. Many of the park's hyenas have been killed this way. And living alone, Spotty and her cub would stand little chance of surviving an attack from a lion pride. So the team constantly monitor her den. As we drive up to Spotty's burrow, we can see her cub, but there's no sign of Spotty. So we've heard the cub. We know that the cub's OK. Where do you think Mum is? We heard the distress call that, she, uh, that uh, the cub made, so meaning that the mum is not there. Ah, uh, so she'll only do that if, if she's looking for Mum? Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, OK. Female hyenas will leave their young for a week at a time when they hunt, but without her to protect it, this youngster is very exposed. When the cub disappears from view, Ollie takes me for a closer look at the den site, which unusually Spotty and her cub share with a family of warthogs. This is absolutely amazing that there are warthog and hyena living so close to each other, because if... Um, if I'm correct, this is quite obviously warthog skulls. Warthog skulls, yeah. So the hyena are actually predating on warthogs, mm. yet they live right next to each other? Yet they live ne uh, right next to each other. Have you heard of that before? Ah, uh, this is very unusual. Uh, That's very yeah. strange. You know, you wouldn't, you know, given the fact there's probably plenty of holes Jones. to choose. <laughs> so how many hyena did there used to be here? There used to be two females. One male and two cubs. Okay. Uh, they were all killed by a lion. 
So the, 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 the lions came in and pretty much wiped them out, except for just Spotty. Yeah, except for Spotty and the small one. It's amazing that, that always, you know, it always reminds me of sort of rival gangs with the big predators. Guess, yeah. The lions hate the hyenas. They'll kill them, but they won't eat them, will they? No, they won't eat them, just to decrease the number. Spotty's got herself in a real pickle. She's on her own, surrounded by lions that really don't want her to be here. It's like gang warfare. She's still got a cub to look after. She's got her work cut out for herself. <coughs> Although Arindi covers almost 300 square miles, it's actually home to only 24 lions. And the pride responsible for killing the rest of Spotty's clan live in a territory very close by. Warren Court has been following these lions for more than a year. Unusually for a male, the pride's leader, Fugitive, is an extremely good hunter who catches most of the pride's food. It's normally the females who make most of the kills. It looks like earlier this morning or late last night, they managed to catch a, an oryx. It looked like an adult. Um, when we first arrived, it was, it was a little difficult to tell because a lot of the skin was gone. When he picked it up and moved it into the thicker bush, we were able to see the horns, which clearly gave away that it was an oryx. Fugitive's name is a legacy of a troubled past. When he was younger, there were two dominant male brothers that ruled the whole reserve, and they used to bully him very badly. One day, they bullied him so bad that he ran to the northern boundary fence and was able to get over it. And we found him about 98 kilometers further north, and he'd killed quite a few prized cattle on his journey. Because he's deemed a cattle killer, all the farmers wanted to have him killed, but luckily, we were willing to do whatever it took to keep him alive, which is why his name is Fugitive. Fugitive has recently received a potentially debilitating injury. You can see in his left eye it's oozing quite a bit of pus. Most likely he did come into contact with one of our spitting cobras, which is it's a 50-50 chance he's either going to lose his eye or he's going to keep his eye. I would have to see how worse it's got, then I would talk to our ecologist and let him know that it's actually getting worse, and then we would decide to go from there if we need to call a vet or just let nature take its course. The injury could affect his hunting, but together with his pride, he still remains a major threat to Spotty and her cub. Back at the hyena burrow, as there's still no sign of Spotty, and she hasn't been seen for several days, I'm keen to set up a camera to catch a glimpse of her. As hyenas are mostly nocturnal, an infrared camera will help me see what's going on at the den after dark. OK, we're in business. That there is an infrared sensor. So if anything moves over there, it's going to trigger off a light and a camera here. And this has all been focused on the burrow, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get pictures of Spotty and or her cub. In the central highlands of Namibia, a dedicated team are attempting to build a new animal kingdom. <laughs> to do this, a group of experts are up close observing the lives of the Arindi Reserve's newly introduced wild inhabitants. But it's been the wettest year in over a century with huge storms sweeping the park day after day. Just getting around has been almost impossible. But even these devastating downpours serve a purpose. All this rain that we've been getting here has resulted in this massive, massive growth of grass. Look, there's some rain just coming our way now. And this grass is not only just food for the animals that live here, but it's also a building material. Look at these beautiful nests here all made of the grass made by weaver birds 
They're a bit shaggy, these ones, but they're very tidy inside. And there are lots of different species. Uh, this one is all solitary nests. Uh, not that impressive, but wait till you see what's in a tree over here. Take a look at this. We're going to have to be quick because that rain is coming towards us and it's like a wall of water. I should point out this isn't just one bird. This is made by a colony of birds, the sociable weaver. So another weaver species that just piles and piles and piles masses amounts of grass into the tree. So much that sometimes they can actually bring the branch down. This one here has lost clumps already and you can see there's uh, big lumps of the nest has fallen down. And it's not just uh, the weavers that live in these nests, you also get other birds moving in. Sometimes birds of prey that will protect this nest from, from predation from other species. So it's a really complex structure, a complex society that lives here and all because of a bit of rain. Talking of rain, I think it's time to leave. Sociable weavers build the largest nest of any birds, with colonies often numbering around a hundred pairs. But although they're common in the southern Kalahari, they don't occur anywhere else in Africa, because the stiff grass that they need to build their nests from only occurs in this region. This year is likely to be a perfect breeding year, as the rains are set to continue grass for nest building and food will be in abundant supply. And when the reserved small water holes turn into vast lakes, it's a time when the park's elephants can simply enjoy the flooded landscape. All elephants love water and these adolescent males can't resist some spontaneous fun. Whether it's a change in season or any other major event, animal behaviour can be severely affected. Whenever you move an animal into a new area, that's bound to change its behaviour. But when you couple that with really social animals like elephants that have very complex relationships with, with other elephants and members of their own family, that's bound to cause a few headaches, not only for the elephants, but also the team that are managing them. Just two weeks ago, I visited two of the reserve's troublesome bull elephants called Stompy and Tui with guide Rodney Hall. OK, get into the vehicle. Please be quiet, do not move. When we approached, the bulls turned on us. Shh, just be very quiet. Because these bull elephants have been known to charge vehicles, it's something Rodney can't afford to let happen in a reserve that gets much of its funding from tourism. Ah. So today we're back again on the park's southern edge in an attempt to get these reluctant elephants to accept our presence. But is it quite an unusual situation for a reserve like this to have young bulls like this without older bulls to keep them in check? It's unusual, yes. These few elephants, they weren't in a breeding herd. They were actually brought from different places, like two from here, three from there, and basically put together. Right, oh, OK. So it's really not their fault that they're all this boisterous, this sort of uncontrolled? That's, that's one, one reason. The other thing you have to bear in mind as well is that these elephants are still very young. Yeah. Suddenly, a large female appears, and Rodney is immediately on the alert. This female has a calf, and we can't afford to get too close. We're just going to turn the vehicle around for safety reasons. Here we go. Here we go. You see that 
what yeah. she did with her head now. Yeah. She's not happy. Yeah. We're gonna give her space. Mm -hmm. And that's most probably because she has that uh, young calf with her as well. Yeah, yeah. You'll see, she, she's gonna stop right there. Yeah. Do see, that's, that's yeah, the... Yeah. Oh. Okay, girl. Oh, yeah. Okay, girl. Yeah. <laughs> You've said your piece. She yeah. still keeps that distance. Yeah. And that's just basically you're too close to my baby. Yeah, yeah. Let's just see what she does. Are you happy now? Oh, there's the calf. You see, there's the calf. Yes. Yeah, yeah. You see? That's beautiful. Oh, they are very young as well. Look. Mother elephants defend their calves aggressively. Eventually, the mother and calf move off, and we can breathe again. Next morning, I return to the hyena den, where we've been recording the night's activities. And I'm hoping to catch a glimpse of Spotty, the young cub's mother. Nighttime in Africa is busy. Many animals are at their most active after resting during the heat of the day. Predators, large and small, hunt for prey. It's a time when Spotty and her cub are at their most vulnerable. On our den camera, there's no sign of Spotty or her cub. Then finally, the cub appears. Just mooching around. No sign of mum. Doesn't stray very far from the den, I notice. So still feeling quite vulnerable, no doubt. Yeah, there's no sign of mum at the moment. This cub is still totally dependent on her mum. She's not going out to hunt with Spotty yet. Uh, stays at the den, so Spotty must be coming back and still feeding her. Because it's not unusual for mother hyenas to leave their cubs alone while they hunt, and the cub appears healthy, I'm convinced there's nothing sinister about Spotty's extended absence. That's brilliant. Sure enough, when I go back just a day later, I finally see Spotty and her cub together again. This caring mother is showing remarkable resilience to bring up her young cub in the face of so much danger, especially on her own. But this young cub's life still hangs in the balance. Only time will tell if this youngster will survive and take its place by its mother out in this remarkable animal kingdom.